Hello. Okay. Oh. <laughs> um, good evening, everyone. My name is Tammy, and I'm a mechanical engineering senior from Nigeria. And this semester, I've had the pleasure of being the team lead for the social entrepreneurship team. Um, thank you again for being here. Apologies for the hiccup earlier, but shout out to the APD team for pushing through without their slides. Um, <laughs> yeah. This semester, the team has done some hard work to drive in towards recommendations for our client, Occupath. Um, we've also braved escape rooms, but um, we're far from setting any records. We've also enjoyed some Mexi great Mexican food, courtesy of our inventor, and put on our fair share of weight, thanks to the 126 pizzas that Jessica mentioned earlier. Um, I don't, before I invite the team up, I'd like to take a minute to just thank our inventor, our mentor, and staff for being there throughout the semester with us, um, and for giving us some direction and guidance. Special shout out to Jamie, my fellow, for putting up with me. Thank you. <laughs> and a shout out to my amazing team for making my team lead semester enjoyable and also stressful, <laughs> but very enjoyable, and for giving me a good time and a good experience and the opportunity to watch you guys grow. So please join me in welcoming the Soshan team. This semester, the Soshen team has been paired with local entrepreneur Greg Holman, who has devised a new VR job sharing technology called Occupath. Occupath's main objective is to empower young professionals to reach their career goals and help improve Oklahoma's workforce. As a team, we conducted over 50 interviews consisting of high school counselors, school board administrators, and content developers who gave us plentiful insight on how to make Occupath a successful reality. As a result, we have devised a plan that will create $1.3 million in revenue and help reach out to 1.1 million students in the next five years. Hi, my name is Sona Niguri. I'm studying microbiology. I'm from OKC. My name is Aaron Snowdell. I'm from Kansas City, and I study international studies and psychology. Hi, I'm Annie Coffey. I'm studying industrial and systems engineering, and I'm from Oklahoma City. My name is Kyle Frankowitz. I'm from Houston, Texas, and I'm studying finance and energy management. And we would like to sincerely thank our mentor, Greg Holman, mentor John Hunnell, team leader Tammy, and so, fellow Jamie, and team leader Tammy. So imagine you're a high school senior, excited about the endless opportunity to go to college, get a career, and finally reach the end of the line. And that's when you consider job shadowing in order to increase your awareness and help you stay motivated to t reach those goals. I and my team members have the opportunity to job shadow as this is the situation for most, if many, and all of us. But only 35% of the students in the nation have this pleasure. From interviews with both high schools and colleges, we have identified three main issues as to why the remaining 65% of the students are not being able to job shadow. First, lack of opportunity. Greg likes to tell the story of a student who wanted to shadow a marine biologist, but the Oklahoma Zoo didn't allow her due to her age, and she was unable to travel to another state. And another student at Fort Gibson wanted to shadow a policeman, but couldn't do so because of liability and safety issues. Next, unclear career goals. If the path and the options are not laid out for the student, then they're not going to be able to see themselves at the finish line. And this path consists of declaring majors, degrees, and colleges, and students are not getting the experience guidance for it. And lastly, with a minimum traveling time of 30 minutes and observation of a time of four hours, students claim they cannot fall behind in school. To tackle these issues, the team has hypothesized Occupath B, a library of initially 25 VR videos that offers career exposure and a career guidance plan in a time-effective manner. Now let me tell you in detail how that will work. For lack of opportunity, VR will bring the experience to the user, thus eliminating any economic barriers such as finance, location, and safety. And as a result, Occupath's product will be a library of initially 25 VR videos focused on STEM fields, as it is the predominant interest in students and half of Oklahoma's critical occupation list. Next, for unclear career goals, VR will allow the student to have user perspective and experiential learning, thus making the experience much more empowering and engaging. And the professional in Occupat's video will lay out the direct options and processes of obtaining different degrees, colleges, and companies that hire these graduates. And lastly, for the lack of time, VR will make it convenient for the student in that they can go to their counselor's office and shadow any profession that they would like to and with the use of a headset that is in the counselor's office. 
and Occupat's 10-minute video will make this convenience plausible. As for the production of the video, Greg would not only need to have a 360-degree camera, but he would need to have the aid of a narrator, a lighting crew, and a script writer. After approximately four hours of recording raw footage, it will then need to be turned into stitched footage. The final product will then be platformed via YouTube 360 or the Occupath app on the Oculus Store, which can then be seen on a $200 headset called Oculus Go headset. And now that you heard about the problems students are facing with job shadowing and the solutions Occupath can offer, here's Aaron to talk about the market Occupath will penetrate. Thank you, Sona. So virtual reality is a rapidly expanding market, and in fact, it's set to double within the next year. Now, part of the reason why it's growing so quickly is that many of the Silicon Valley giants, such as Facebook, Google, and Apple, are all heavily invested in virtual reality. So the, currently, virtual reality is already used as an educational technology in schools at all levels. Um, so as you can see here, the market for educational technology in the virtual reality realm is already at $450 million. Now our team has identified a $52 million section of that that's the virtual reality job shadowing market. So we operated under a few assumptions when coming up with that market. First of all, we included all of the high school students and uh, post-secondary educational students, rather the undergraduate students at both colleges and universities in that market. Additionally, we used the price point of $1.50 per student, and we got that price point confirmed by our interviews with counselors and district administrators at both the high school and college level. Now, when looking at the market and how Occupath can best approach it when it's ready to expand its product, there are a few key strategies that we have identified. So the first and obvious one to reach the most students would be to target a big university, such as the University of Oklahoma, as you make one sale and reach thousands of students. Additionally, we've identified that targeting public school districts in key states can also help Occupath get its product out to as many students as possible. Now, the reason why to target public school districts is that other public school districts throughout the state will also pick up this technology based off of these key trend-setting districts. One example of which is the Pittsburgh School District, and we talked with the uh, technology integration specialist who referenced this exact trend. So now that we know what the market looks like, let's take a look at the competition. So one of the many things that makes Occupath so special is that it's the only company working to create a library of virtual reality job shadowing videos. The two closest competitors, Virtual Job Shadow and Candid Careers, also make career videos, but there are a few key distinctions that sets Occupath apart. The first of which being is that Virtual Job Shadow's videos are only 2D videos, whereas Candid Careers are just interviews with professionals in the field, so you never actually get to see them doing their jobs. The other two companies, uh, Universive and uh, Nearpod, make virtual reality educational content. However, their content is not focused on career awareness. So now that we have a better understanding of the market and the competition, Annie is going to get into the business model. Thanks, Aaron. One of Occupy's goals is to keep the cost of its product low so that it can reach as many students and as schools as possible. To do this, Occupy should utilize business sponsorships. So businesses that are featured in these videos would serve as sponsors for the videos, covering their production costs, which would be about $5,000 per video. In return, these businesses would gain great brand exposure as their name, their employees, and their facilities are in front of potentially millions of students. They'd also be able to advertise that they are investing in their communities, in education, and in career exploration. Additionally, the companies would also receive the video content once it is produced to use as they best see fit. An important consideration here is that proprietary information will need to be avoided. So therefore, Occupy should guarantee that the companies have the final approval of the video before it is uploaded to the virtual reality library. So here you see Occupath creating a video from the OERB, which is the Oklahoma Energy Resources Board. They are eager to sponsor several videos for Occupath, and an example video might be following an oil rig operator out in rural Oklahoma. By producing a video such as this, Occupath would eliminate both the travel barriers and the safety barriers for students that are interested in this field. Occupath can then sell this virtual reality library to students. Again, this would initially be 25 videos, but the library would go grow greatly over time, and the videos would be about 10 minutes long. A couple considerations here are first, that the decision makers differ by school type. 
So private schools have much more autonomy over their spending. Sometimes counselors have their own budgets, and not the counselors, then the principals or the school CFO could approve the purchase. But in public school districts, this is made not at the school level, but rather at the district level. So all Catholics would need to speak with either a curriculum instructor, a superintendent, or if the district is quite large, so that it's a large purchase, um, all Catholics need to talk to the school board for their approval as well. Additionally, in interviews, 83% of counselors noted that they wanted this material available to their students at all times. This is an important distinction because our mentor, Greg, initially thought that Occupath could operate in a traveling model, going from school to school for just a couple days at a time. Also, in interviews, 50% of counselors said that they would require demonstrations of the product before purchase to ensure that they are purchasing a quality product that their students would enjoy. These demonstrations have been incorporated into Occupath's rollout, phase, rollout plan, which consists of three phases. The first phase is beta testing. This will occur from, from years zero to two, with the first phase being in Oklahoma and then at year one expanding to Texas. Oklahoma was chosen for its convenience in Texas because it is a nearby target region, which Aaron previously discussed. This beta testing would be used, of course, to provide tweaks for the product as necessary, but also to collect important empirical data that can be used for future marketing and sales. This then brings Occupath to its sales phase. So with the sales phase, Occupath will first need to have rapid mass marketing. So here, Occupath should send out mass emails across the country and follow up with personal communication to the target districts and the target regions. Here also, Occupath should attend trade shows and conferences to get its product in front of as many potential customers at once. And then finally, Occupath can move into its sales and demonstrations phase. So if a school is interested in, in purchasing the Occupath Virtual Reality Library, it can be given a full free week access to its VR library. And then if it so chooses, can move into the sales cycle. This sales cycle can last anywhere from zero to 18 months, depending on the time of year, the school size, and the region type. And now that you have a bit of an understanding of how Occupath will expand moving forward, Kyle will explain how its finances can expect to grow in conjunction with this rollout plan. Thank you, Annie. So as you can see in the graph behind me, uh, this is Occupath's projected financials over the first five years. As you can see in year one, Occupath plans to break even as they will use the entirety of the revenue received from these corporate sponsorships to put towards the production of these videos. As you can see in year three, there's a large revenue bump, and that is when we believe that Occupath can begin selling to students. We recommend that he does this by attending trade shows and conferences, and which will allow him to uh, Again, build networks and build relationships with the key decision makers in these school districts. Due to a personal testimony of someone who attended one of these conferences, we, re we assume Greg can achieve a 20% conversion rate on these interactions into sales, which will allow him to reach initially 58,000 students in year three. As Annie mentioned earlier, we also recommend that Greg does a mass marketing uh, email plan that in which he, uh, again, continues to contact key individuals in these key markets that Aaron also mentioned. Through secondary research, we were able to determine a 0.34% uh, conversion rate on these emails. While that doesn't seem like a lot, if he is able to uh, send these emails to a lot of people, it really can show that his revenue will uh, grow exponentially. So as you can see, he will be able to reach a $1.3 million profit in year five, as all, while also being able to reach over a million students in year five. In summation, we recommend that Occupy's initial library is 25 videos that range anywhere between 10 to 15 minutes. That will then ultimately be sold to students at $1.50 per student per, per year basis. By utilizing corporate sponsorships, Greg will be able to cover production costs and achieve a $1.3 million profit while uh, also managing to cover a portion of this $52 million virtual reality job shadowing market that Aaron uh, discussed earlier as well. We've really enjoyed our semester and we look forward to wrapping up in the coming weeks. We thank you all for being here and now we'll open up the floor to questions. Yes. Does the VR content only highlight the jobs, maybe most exciting aspects, like with a marine biologist who reality may be writing for instance? Yes, so we've discussed, the question was about uh, exactly what the videos would be about as far as it, whether it's the most interesting thing. And yes, that is uh, our hypothesis. Obviously, there are a lot of STEM jobs such as engineers that spend a lot of time at desks, but rather the video would be about the end product that they do, such as if they constructed a bridge, you could see exactly what the process is and what that job site is like. Is a cheerleader for the 
oil and gas industry. And they can be played into the school system for over a decade. Is that a fair example of how this partnership would work for all of the other different projects that you're talking about? You're assuming $60,000 in this partnership in your uh, estimate of your revenue. So you're asking whether the ORB is representative of other businesses that will be sponsoring these videos? So um, in speaking of the ORB, which is a quasi-governmental agency, Oklahoma Energy and Gas Companies actually pay a percentage of their tax dollars into the company. Okay, so the ORB is a state agency um, self-described as um, having these companies pay their tax dollars into the company. Um, and though they do already operate in the school system, they are making sales to schools. And so that makes the ORB um, fairly representative of a typical company. Additionally, speaking with other companies such as Griffin Technologies, Boeing, and Dobson Technologies, they were also um, thought this is a feasible idea and were eager to get their videos into schools as well. Yes. So what are the largest transport in the Sure. So the question was uh, why the we mentioned the rural barriers to job shadowing and that the target market was more targeted to more urban schools. So when looking at the market and uh, incorporating that with the phase rollout plan, that was to more specify what the most profitable part of the section would be so that he could make further down the line more accessible to all schools. And additionally, uh, on the barriers, it's uh, the virtual reality headsets, the price can be variable. So we are recommending the $200 one, which is really a small price to pay considering that the travel cost from a rural area to these jobs would be, could be close to that in some cases. Yes. Um, so at what stage of the rollout plan does Octopath start approaching production contractors? And how long would it take to get to So Occupath would actually not need to use production contractors. They are operating as a software-only company, so the headsets would, as Aaron mentioned, be the Oculus Go's. So they're only they're staying in the software sector. Then with the actual development, uh, Occupath, Occupath's inventor Greg could do the filming himself, and he, if, he, if he so chose, he could contract out the editing and stitching. That would begin um, at year zero. It is important to note that right now, Occupath is developing AR and VR job training simulations, so this process can start once our inventor Greg feels that he is ready to dive into this, uh, into this new sector. So then those 25 videos can be expected to be produced by year two. However, the typical filming is only about four hours per day. So if he is able to create a few different videos at a company, that process can be sped up uh, much more quickly. It really just, just does depend on how much time Occupy is able to give to this, uh, to this job shadowing as opposed to the current job training it's doing. We have time for one more question. <laughs> 